how much control realistically do you think we should have and how much do you think the population, the electorate want? Well, first of all, Jacob, it's a, it's a pleasure to be on your programme and indeed to see you since uh, Hong Kong days when I think Chris Hatton was then our last governor in Hong Kong. Um, I have to say, my head is spinning from your Mogulog. I, 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 my pen and paper ran out on a list of figures. And I, and I have to say, if any of the viewers have followed this, they should get a special Mog prize. Because uh, at the end of the day, it's an extraordinary number of figures you wield that. What I think the essential question here is, is somehow problems that we face in Britain, skill shortages, going to be resolved whether we follow your prescription or other people's prescriptions by dependence on migrant labor. And I think that the key answer here is no, it's not. I mean, we, despite having, as you rightly pointed out, nearly 400,000 net migrants last year, I think record numbers, we've still got around 1.2 million vacancies in the job market. We happen to have around 1.2 million people who are unemployed. But there's currently a dramatic mismatch between those looking for jobs and those who have jobs to offer, and they don't fit. And in a sense, that's really the essence of the problem here. We could talk about immigration, we could talk about net migration, we can even talk about asylum until the cows come home. But the actual numbers of vacancies we're dealing with, the problem of productivity in the economy, is on an even much bigger scale than any of the numbers that you've given out tonight. And I think really where we've all got to focus, which is what Keir Starmer was recently talking about, is we've got to be weaned off this subject of migration as the solution to labour. And we've got to start talking about skilling the workforce, the people who are here. Well, I think that's a really important point because it seems to me it's not entirely coincidental that over the last perhaps 30 years, when we've seen a big increase in migration, we've had almost no increase in productivity. We've had a very weak performance compared to other countries. And I just wonder whether bringing in unskilled people has meant that businesses haven't had the incentive to invest in productivity uh, increases that might otherwise have helped ensure that we didn't need the level of migration that we've currently got. Well, there's undoubtedly a need for some migration to deal with some very specific problems. And one example that immediately springs to mind, and I'm sure you and I would both agree on this, last year's crisis in the transport sector, where we didn't have enough lorry drivers to get petrol to petrol stations, that seems to me to be a very good example of where actually issuing visas to people who can come in and drive these lorries would have been very sensible. Being able to do it quickly expedite these things would be essential. And again, one of the problems about our current immigration system is how slow it is and how badly it effectively matches the skill shortages to people who are coming in. But having said that, you know, what again strikes me is if you take a sector like the food and accommodation sector, there are currently in that sector something in the order of 7% of jobs not filled. That's somewhere in the region, I think, of about 150,000 jobs we can't fill. Now, if we haven't got people to do those jobs in accommodation and in those sectors related to tourism, we've got a real problem in Britain. And I think one of the things we've got to do, and it's irrespective of whether it's a Conservative government or a Labour government, government has got to recognise it has a responsibility to do something about matching those, for example, leaving school with having the skills to fill the jobs that are out there. But surely that comes back to the five million who um, are effectively unemployed at the moment, that um, entry-level jobs in hospitality and so on require relatively little training and therefore can be filled by people who are currently um, not in employment who are already living here. Well, I think there's a danger in that argument because it becomes a race to the bottom. And if you take an area, for example, like the health service and social care, to some extent we've depended upon migrant labour to do the jobs that are the least well paid with the poorest conditions. And the problem is now we've got a massive shortage in that area because by failing to invest in the technology, by failing to invest in the conditions, by failing to actually have decent levels of pay, we are seeing a mass exodus 
of those staff on whom we depend to keep our hospitals open, our care homes open, and all of those things that we need in the health and social care sector. And of course, that then plays into the nursing sector as well, because we see this massive gulf between those and their pay in the public sector, the NHS, and in the private sector. So we're seeing tens of thousands of nurses trained leaving the sector. Now, if we don't address that problem because we only focus on a race to the bottom, we are going to be in real crisis in our healthcare system, and we won't be able to fix that in the lifetime of just a new government. But I'd turn the race to the bottom the other way round, that what, what we need is to increase the domestic skills and to increase the uh, innovation and the use of technology domestically, rather than bringing in, by and large, cheap, unskilled labour from abroad. And that that's what we've relied on, and that's why pay hasn't increased um, and why technology hasn't been used. Well, to some extent, that's, that's self-evident, isn't it? Because that's what the numbers have actually done. We've got large numbers of people still wanting to come. And we've got large numbers of vacancies. But if we don't look at holistically something like the health service and recognise that we have to pay nurses at a level that actually matches the private sector, because the market will decide. And as a consequence, these wonderful nurses who've dedicated themselves to the NHS are leaving because the conditions are too difficult, they're too demanding, they're killing for them, they are underpaid. And if we don't address that, as well as at the bottom of the thing, we are going to find our health service simply won't function at all. But that isn't about, that's a different argument, that's not about bringing in more people from abroad, because that keeps pay low, that we know that the least well-off do worse when you have mass migration. And that's why you see the... the um, people who are most concerned and supported Brexit uh, were by and large those on lower wages. We brought a number of nurses in from outside of the UK, and we've been doing that over the last 20 years. Uh, we began filling, for example, in 1997, the huge deficit in numbers of nurses by allowing people to come in and to work from countries outside of the UK. We haven't properly addressed this issue, and in the last 13 or 14 years, this issue has got much, much worse, which is why we're seeing this disaster in the NHS at the moment. It isn't only a problem of people at the bottom who are prepared to clean the floors of our hospitals. It's because we're not paying the people who are our nurses and our junior doctors at a level, which is going to keep them in the service. And we are now paying the price for an unmanaged way of recruiting our staff and not remunerating them properly. And therefore, immigration is part of that. But the solution to our problem in the health service is not going to be, as Keir Starmer said, by somehow looking at if we only tweak the immigration system this way and that way, reduce this number or do this, we'll get a fix. We won't. We've got to look at our health care system. And what we've got to look at is what we've got to do with that, how we pay people, what the conditions are for those people, the investment we make in the technology, and whether it's in health or social care or if it's in the food industry or tourism or accommodation, across the piece. Immigration may help us, but at the end of the day, Thanks. it's not the answer to the problem.